and our next speaker is Liam. Liam, true. <laughs> yeah, you will tell oh, us. No. Liam. Liam. That's me. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. And we learn about uh, a computer that I've been looking at for a long time. And um, eventually, uh, I get hold on uh, uh, one of the few e existing examples or e existing uh, machines that are still there. Um, very, very interesting machine built by Jeff Reskin. But you will tell us all about that. <laughs> and I, um, I will try. Uh, the Canon Cat and uh, Liam will, yeah, we're, we're looking forward. Uh, and especially, I'm very excited to, to hear about that. Well, I, I hope that I can... Uh, tell you some some interesting things about this machine. So, uh, hi, uh, my name's Liam Proven. I am the Linux and open source reporter at the Register, a British uh, computer news uh, website. Um, although I'm actually based in the Isle of Man these days. Um, <clears throat> um, recently, the um, editor asked me to do a retrospective on the Macintosh computer, which was released uh, 40 years ago in January. And when I uh, wrote about that, that also led me down the avenue of what inspired the Macintosh. Um, now, I myself, I've, I've been writing for the Register full time for nearly three years, but as a freelancer for about 15 years, but I'm I'm quite old, and I'm a, a I've been a techie since the 80s. I started out on uh, home computers, and my first was uh, the first one that I owned was a Sinclair Spectrum. I have as a visual aid a Spectrum Next here, which I think is going to uh, feature in the in the next talk as well. Um, and um, um, I much enjoyed playing around with BASIC, but I, I never really made the transition to fourth myself. It was, of course, one of the um, other most significant languages on in the 8-bit era. Um, but my career led me in a different direction from programming into uh, networking and building systems and um, installing and eventually into documenting uh, computer systems. And I, I never really moved on much from BASIC myself, but I think that BASIC had some attributes which are forgotten now, now that languages like Python are, are very trendy. And for Unix people, Python looks very simple and clear, but there is some complexity that's inherent in Unix computers, which um, Python makes you confront and learn. And basic and indeed contemporaries like fourth didn't. And that is also true of the, not merely of the Macintosh, but the Macintosh's forerunners. So the Mac happened because um, Apple's previous uh, computer, the Apple Lisa uh, turned out to be a flop. It was a pioneering machine for its time. It was launched in 1981, and it was the first mass market computer with a graphical user interface. Um, but it was also a multitasking computer. It came with a hard disk as standard, and it did away with a great deal of the complexity that was common in, in computers at that time. The Lisa didn't really have programs. You simply tore off a piece of stationary from a pad. So if you wanted to create a document, you tore off a piece of paper from a stationary document, and suddenly you could enter text into it and save it. You could tear off a piece of paper from a drawing pad and then draw on it and save it without ever having to know what program you'd be using. The Mac had to throw away a lot of that to fit it into a machine which was a quarter of the price and could cope with a single floppy. But the Mac started off as a very different project from a guy called Jeff Raskin. And Raskin is sadly uh, dead now. He, he died over a decade ago. Um, he was one of the team at Xerox Park that uh, did, worked on the Smalltalk 
programming language and object oriented uh, programming and the the original uh, windowing interface. He, um, you know, that project also included some very other important technology. And later on, he went and got a job with Apple. And he is the man that persuaded Steve Jobs to visit Xerox Park and see the Alto machine that Xerox were working on. Raskin is the man who gave Jobs the idea that led to the Lisa and the Mac. Raskin was working on his own uh, idea for a computer at the time within Apple. Um, and he named that project after his favorite variety of Apple, the fruit, which is an Apple called the Macintosh. And he named his computer the Macintosh. Uh, Unfortunately for, for Jeff Raskin, uh, Steve Jobs got taken off the Lisa project that he had inspired and designed, aimed at being a graphical user interface computer. And Jobs took over Jeff Raskin's project, the Macintosh. Raskin was very unhappy with the way that Jobs was taking the project, so he quit. He started his own company called Information Appliance Limited. He designed a computer and looked for someone to build it. And that compute, that company was Canon, the Japanese word processor and printer manufacturer. And the computer that resulted was the Canon Cat. Now, they only sold in the region of about 20 to 50,000 units of Canon Cat. Um, they're pretty scarce these days. But a very interesting uh, vintage computer expert, a guy called um, uh, uh, Cameron Kaiser, wrote a blog post early this year, and I'll, I'll put a link in the chat. This was kind of the inspiration and the germination of my article. He picked up a Canon Cat quite inexpensively on eBay, and he documents the process of disassembling it, which is not trivial and uh, replacing some parts of the floppy drive to get it working. And that led me to write an article about the Canon Cat for the register. Um, and that's what led to this talk happening. Um, the Canon Cat represents an avenue that computing could have taken but did not. And in a way, the industry today is circling back towards this idea, um, but doing it in an extremely inefficient and complicated way. The CAT was a very simple machine. Now, I, I don't have any presentation or anything for this, but I'll, I'll give you some links to, to follow up. Um, the CAT was a machine that had a very early graphical user interface, but it didn't have any kind of pointing device. It was entirely driven by the keyboard. Yes, by all means, that, that's the, the register link there, and you can do whatever you like with that. Um, and um, it added two keys to the basic keyboard design, which were called leap. Um, the leap key on its own um, moved forwards or backwards a word or a, a letter or a word or a sentence or a paragraph at a time but you could also hold down leap and type some letters and it would then search for the preceding or following instance of that word. It's a very radically simple graphical user interface because it doesn't have windows, it doesn't have dialog boxes, it doesn't have programs or files. The idea of it was that it would be a an appliance for handling information in the same way, Raskin said, that a device like a toaster is an appliance for making toast and a telephone is an appliance for making calls. A toaster doesn't have an on-off switch. An, an, an ordinary landline telephone doesn't have an on-off switch. And Raskin didn't want the cat to have an on-off switch, although I gather somebody at Canon overruled him and, and forced him. Um, it does have a floppy drive, but it doesn't have files. What it can basically do is it saves your entire workspace as an image of memory onto the floppy disk. 
And if you turn the computer on and you put a floppy disk in, it loads everything that you are working on back into memory. It works as a sort of giant text editor. If you turn it on, you can just start entering text. You can do very simple formatting on that text. It understands and can show fonts and things. It can do bold and underline and italic and things like that. It can obviously print that text, but it could also fax that text to somebody. It could save snippets of text over a serial cable and send them to other computers. You could attach a telephone line to it and you could send blocks of text to other people. So this very clever, sophisticated text editor would also allow your little computer to be a fax machine. Without ever having a fax application, it would allow you to email people um, without having a separate email application. Um, you could enter a column of figures and generate tables and format those tables. But once you had columns of figures in the device, you could total or average a column. You could ask it to calculate the difference between columns and numbers in columns. So this single text editing program was also able to work as a spreadsheet. It had the ability to save people and their contact details and reload them. So it dispenses with the whole idea of separate applications. And you need to know what program you are in to do a particular task by turning this into all just information and one program which can be extended to add new functions to it does whatever you want to do with the information you enter into it. If the information is addresses, it will search them and sort them. If the information is numbers, it will do calculations on them. The plan was to add the ability to, to do charts. And to make this software small and simple and efficient, it was entirely implemented in fourth. This is a essentially a monolithic fourth program, which is both the operating system and its single application and the user interface all in one. But it did have APIs and it was designed to be extensible. And the plan that Raskin had was that there would be an aftermarket that you could buy extensions to your cat's functionality and load them in off a disk or download them from another computer. And suddenly your cat would know how to do new things with information and it could grow along with you. Um, now, the, the, the cat did have a uh, forerunner. Um, he prototyped some of these ideas in the form of an add-in card for the Apple II computer, which was called the Swift card, which had a simpler earlier version of the uh, fourth application in a ROM chip. Um, the Swift card has been disassembled and the code is, is out there. The software for the Canon Cat, which was never published at the time, um, was disassembled. Canon do not own the uh, the design. They only own this implementation of it. Uh, Raskin's son, Asa Raskin, went on to further develop some of his father's ideas. And he uh, created a uh, software system for Windows, which was available as free software. Um, Raskin also codified some of his work in the form of a book, The Humane Interface, which I see somebody has already uh, mentioned in the chat there. The uh, Canon Cat 4 software is out there. Some of it was posted onto uh, Complang 4 many years ago, I believe. Um, um, there's also uh, a lot of uh, documentation um, all the manuals and so on are still out there. Um, there are several pages which have reams of information about the uh, the Canon Cat. Its manuals have been preserved. There are demonstration videos and adverts of the Canon Cat. 
there are even some uh, prototypes of what Information Appliance Limited hoped to do next, including the uh, Swift laptop, which was a laptop before the ideas for laptops had really been formalized. And uh, there are pictures of it on that page I, I, I just linked to with um, 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 an LCD screen and uh, a keyboard with the leap keys on either side of the spacebar. Um, given that the software is out there now, I think it would be a fascinating project that there is at least one Canon Cat emulator. It's been implemented in JavaScript and it's available on the Internet Archive. And if you go to the Internet Archive and look at the Canon Cat uh, manuals and um, the video cassette that was uh, in the box in the box with the machine with the demo, you can actually fire up a Canon Cat instance in your web page and play with it. Although without the correct keyboard and so on, I think it's a little bit impenetrable to use. But there is um, the software is out there. I think it would be a fantastic exercise for the for the hobbyist community to try to get the cat software running on on some more modern uh, fourth that can run on top of present day operating systems on Windows and Mac and so on as a sort of um, text editor application. And I think that there is, you know, I could dream about this, but that there is, I think, possibly potential there to build it on one of the bare metal fourths out there and make this some sort of uh, distraction-free writing environment that you could boot up on a generic machine and work with uh, text numbers, potentially graphics, but not press alt tab and switch to a web browser and then lose three hours of your day because somebody on the internet was wrong and it was vitally important to tell them. Um, because I can certainly say that uh, this is a problem that really affects me on a regular basis as a writer. Um, Quora is a desperately bad website for this. They've basically provided uh, XKCD Comic 386 as a service, um, <laughs> crowdsourced it. There's always somebody wrong on Quora, and there's hours of fun to be had in telling them so. Um, so, yeah, um, I sadly enough, I don't own a Canon Cat much as I would like to. Um, um, a couple of owners of the machines have said that they got lucky on eBay. Um, and have picked them up for just tens of dollars, but I fear that maybe these days they are too well known. But um, it it would, in principle, I think, be possible to to resurrect this as a as a standalone app, maybe that could understand a more modern keyboard layout, and had the ability to save its memory onto files on disk and and load them again. Um, I'd I'd love to see somebody resurrect some of the ideas of the cat. The very simple. The idea of a very simple computer that you don't need to know anything about programs to work with has been resurrected today, of course, in the form of our featureless, buttonless smartphones. But hidden underneath the surface of any one of these is multiple gigabyte Unix operating system with its myriad of little config files and about 200 different scripting languages all hidden. Um, the cat is designed to be extensible, and its software was designed to be hackable upon by by people using fourth. Um, there you are. That's 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 what I know about the Canon Cat. And I hope that that was um, of some interest. Um, for me, it, although the machine itself was a failure, um, I think it shows a whole other way that computers could have gone. And it's very, very interesting for me to think, well, what if Raskin had been allowed to pr pursue this project while he was at Apple? And Apple had produced this information appliance, the original Macintosh, as its successor to the Apple II and the Apple III. And maybe the Apple II GS line could have taken over as the color media computer for, for hobbyists and so on. The, the, there is a whole other world that never happened. Fourth is, of course, just, just one part of that. There you go. Thank you very much for your time. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you Liam. Yeah. yeah. Are there any questions to Liam? Not a question, but I I would like to add, there are same uh, some famous uh, pictures of of Raskin uh, in Japan, 
or in America, I don't know, I can't remember, with a huge depot of these computers, of these cannons, I think they produced 50,000 units, but only sold in the beginning very slowly chunks of 5,000 mm -hmm. units. And they were very concerned because Raskin was in this depot, huge amount of, of cases, of, of boxes with the cannon cut and not easy to sell. I, mm -hmm. I don't know why. I, I, I don't know the, the, if the my, price my, was... It was too wrong. uncommon. I think my impression is that Canon did not know how to market this computer. And at the time, they, they sold word processors. The company did go on to do more ambitious products. For example, another almost forgotten Canon machine is Canon did a device later, I think it was called the Object Station. It was one of the only non-Next computers that was sold running the Next operating system as its native OS. Um, and this was the x86 version of uh, Next Step. And the object station, I think, was a pizza box with a 486 in it running Next Step. Um, when Next was already starting to pull out of doing hardware um, because it too had difficulty selling its machines, partly because they were $30,000 or something new. Mm -hmm. um, only a few years after the Canon Cat launched, which was, I think, about 1988, um, nine, uh, 1987, the yes, um, Amstrad launched the PCW range, the, the CPM machine I mentioned in the chat earlier. And the CPM was was sort of, the, the opposite, the the, piece, the Amstrad PCW was a very technically unambitious computer. It was 70s technology packaged up in an easy to use all-in-one unit um, in the era of x86 PCs. Mm. But it was designed to be deeply unintimidating. If you wanted to write words, you put the word processor disk in and turned it on. If you wanted to do anything else, which I think many owners never did, you put the CPM disk in and turned it on. And because it was old tech, it was cheap. And Amstrad sold millions of them. Um, it's it's quite common to hear uh, Commodore fans, especially from the Commodore 64 era, talk about the Commodore 128 as the last new 8-bit computer. But it really wasn't. The Amstrad PCW came along after the Commodore 128 and sold well, well, millions the, the, in, in some, in some um, from some view, uh, this was a revolu revolutionary computer. And one of the problems, as you well said, was marketing. Canon did not know how to market the computer. But another problem, somebody put on the chat MS-DOS. No, this is another problem. But, but one of the problems was uh, the, uh, it had no mouse. So this confused the people because it was m much more productive without the mouse. Yeah. But probably they they should have inserted a mouse as a I don't know as a as an alternative. The, yeah. The think... the joke is that that Raskin gave it the name Cat because cats kill mice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, and Apple made his Macintosh project into a mouse based computer, which which he didn't like and didn't approve of. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's true. It's 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 only a rumor, but uh, it's yeah, one that I um, like. I think actually. Uh... Uh, Raskin's idea was that it's not a computer at all, it's an appliance exactly. that um, does solve tasks for you and it's not programmable in the sense uh, that you want uh, that you typically saw. Of course you could if you if you want to and this raises my question, do you know which dialect of force uh, this I uh, think actually it, uses? It, I think it's called t mm -hmm. and I do not know anything about this, yeah, yeah. this form of the language. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I, I don't know exactly, uh, but I, I, I think uh, during my research I saw that the, the source code of the FOSS system itself is also available somewhere, so that is great for us. And uh, also QEMO uh, has support for the Canon CAD, so mm -hmm. if you want to run it locally, uh, you have to have some tweaking and then uh, go ahead. Aha, here we go. 
Yeah, great. Peter, you collected all the resources already. <laughs> Very good. If you enter into this uh, site, I copied a lot of links from the internet so you can find everything because I love this computer. I really love the Canon Cut. Mm -hmm. in, in another world, it, it should have been great and it should have transformed the, the industry. I, I think that there were a lot of ideas in the Lisa as well that, that we should have listened to and moved away from this mini computer model of, of applications that operate on files and users have to learn about this stuff. Um, I, I had a startup company in 2009, which um, produced what we, what we internally called a computer for grandmothers. Um, and no offense is intended to mothers or grandmothers, but a, a computer that would let very non-technical people get online, talk to email and Skype with their uh, far off family. Um, a year after we launched, Apple launched the iPad and uh, pretty much destroyed us. Um, but uh, a sign of that was that my mom has one of these machines herself, obviously. Um, but a couple of years later, when, when the company was winding down and there were no more software updates, I got her a used iPad to see if she'd be able to use this. And she just picked up the package and from the size and weight went, oh, is it an iPad? Cool. Um, such, such was the penetration of the idea of a simple to use, unintimidating computer. You know, the, the, the market was there. Maybe he was just too early and had just too different an approach. Mm -hmm. So, thank uh, you very I did much post. For your Sorry, I did post a uh, link to the software, uh, to the source code in the chat. So, if you want to add that to the uh, fourth books, uh, that'd be great. I think it's it is. Mm -hmm. I think it is in the in the in the in the books. But if not, I can link it, of course. Uh, uh, it, I don't know if, if Liam uh, uh, explained that all this, the interface was a hypertext. And when you, um, when you uh, power on the computer, it would go immediately to the last text you were typing or working with. You didn't have anything to do. It was just a working station. It was nothing to play around. Or, or pressing buttons, nothing. It was automatically. Uh, so it was a fantastic machine for, for its time. It was really, really many, many years ahead. I completely agree. Yes. Um, I, I do hope I can find one one day, but, uh, but these days I am a, a, married, a married man with a, with a four-year-old daughter and my wife is uh, sadly not interested in my uh, hobby of collecting old and interesting computers and feels that I already have too many. She does maybe have a point there. But an, a, both a Next computer and uh, a Canon Cat would be very, very high on my wish list. 